Welcome to Joe's Productions, everyone. Today we're taking a look at a very important election, the election of 1932, and we're going to take a look at what happens after that election, and that is the New Deal with your boy right there, Franklin Roosevelt. But first, who's running in 1932? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Well, of course, we have the Democrats going with Franklin Roosevelt. More on him in just a bit. And Herbert Hoover ran for re-election as the Republican candidate. And there's not a lot of optimism that he was going to come out of this election the winner of the presidency. And a lot of that has to do with circumstances. And of course, during this time, the Great Depression is rocking. It is going really, really strong, even in 1932. And it's not just the stock market, as you can see in the graphic, but... Other things, 25% unemployment, banks are closing and people are losing their money. People are having foreclosures of their homes and farms. And there's a growing frustration with the limited response of the federal government under the leadership of President Hoover. And the just other things are not going really well. In 1932, Hoover sends the army in to evict the so-called bonus marchers who were the World War I veterans hoping to get their bonus paid a little early. And you could see their Hoovervilles on fire in this image right here. So in 1932, what does Herbert Hoover stand for? And it's important to keep in mind, initially Hoover was a rugged individualist and he opposed intervention by the federal government. Any government support he believed should come from local or state governments, not the federal government. He really favored voluntary action. He believed in industry, thrift, and self-reliance. He did not want the federal government playing an overly active role in trying to fix the Great Depression. He really believed that prosperity was just around the corner. He did some things. He asked business and agricultural leaders not to cut production, to lower wages or lay off workers, but none of it was enough. And really, Hoover and many Republicans were afraid and they were not going to take actions that they felt would destroy self-reliance, that would make people dependent. They feared that if the government gave out money that this would weaken or perhaps destroy people's self-reliance. They also were very fearful of increasing the federal deficit, the debt, and of course there were fears about kind of creating an overly socialistic uh, set of programs, this fear of socialism. So Republicans, including Hoover, did not want the federal government to take too big a stand against the Great Depression. Now, over time, as economic problems continued, Hoover decided to take direct federal action. There's oftentimes this misunderstanding that Hoover does absolutely nothing, and that is incorrect. And you can see that right there. This is his, I'm going to handle it face. So what does he do? And it's really important you understand the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. And this was Hoover's kind of big, you know, effort to deal with the problems of the Great Depression. And basically its goal was to save struggling businesses to prop them up to stabilize these businesses by providing them with money. Money on my mind, money, money on my mind. Throw it, throw it up, watch it follow. And under the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, the federal government gave federal loans to struggling railroads, banks, and other businesses. And you can see from our graphic, the federal government is giving the money to these businesses. And this is basically the idea of trickle-down economics. The idea if the financial health of these businesses were was restored at the top of the economic pyramid, then the benefits would trickle down to others like the workers. The hope was by giving these federal loans to these businesses that this would lead to job creation, reduce layoffs, stabilize wages, and other benefits. And the RFC really reflects this belief in not providing direct relief to people, but rather through this trickle-down kind of system. And the RFC does provide some help, but nowhere near enough, and the Great Depression continued. Hoover and the Republicans did do a few other things. There is the Holly Smoot Tariff, the highest peacetime protective tariff in 
our history, which only worsened the depression in both America and abroad because other nations enacted their own tariffs. So things are not looking good for Hoover and the Republicans in 1932, and the Democrats pick Franklin Roosevelt. And I know what you're thinking, instant name recognition. And yes, he is a distant cousin of Theodore Roosevelt. He came up in the Democratic Party, became governor of New York in 1928, and in the election of 1932. Ew promising a new deal. And there's his famous quote, I pledge you, I pledge myself, to a new deal for the American people. And it sounds really good, and he projected a lot of optimism and energy, but the reality is in 1932, no one really knew what he meant. It was not a organized, pre-planned set of programs. If anything, he really didn't have any blueprint or concrete ideas, but what he did project was this desire to do something. We need action. And you can see in this political cartoon, Franklin Roosevelt is playing the role of doctor with his New Deal remedies, and he's got the medicine, and there's all sorts of different types of medicine for the sick nation, the sick Uncle Sam. And so in 1932, the nation voted, and the results What a nail-biter. Franklin Roosevelt is elected President of the United States. It is a beatdown. Hoover only carried six states in the Electoral College. He didn't do well at all. Democrats, perhaps even more importantly, won majorities in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. And so they, the Democrats in 1932, have a mandate from the American people. They have the power, not only the executive, but the legislative power to create change. Whatever that change would be, we will see. And one other outcome of the election of 1932 is it is the beginning of what becomes known as the New Deal Coalition. In the following election in 1936, you're going to get various groups coming together to support the Democratic Party. You're going to get African Americans, which historically had voted for the Republican Party, the Party of Lincoln. You get working class voters, especially organized labor and labor unions, people in urban areas, various ethnic and racial groups, and farmers coming together to form this New Deal coalition that'll last pretty much up into the late 1960s, early 1970s for the Democrats. In many ways, the election of 1932 will become a turning point. Those policies, those GOP policies, this limited federal government philosophy of the Republicans, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, well... I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. Roosevelt is going to bring a very different view about the role and the responsibility of the federal government in the years to come. Now, Franklin Roosevelt will become the 32nd president of the United States. He will take office in 1933, and he will serve it until 1945, our longest serving president ever. He will be elected four terms. And he is not going to go at this alone. He's going to have a group of advisors, a very diverse group of advisors known as the Brain Trust. These were those individuals who helped him develop his New Deal programs. Many of them had worked with him when he was governor of New York. And amongst them was Frances Perkins, the first woman member of the presidential cabinet as Secretary of Labor. And she is going to play a very important role developing the program known as Social Security. And this New Deal that we really don't know in 1932 or early 1933 what exactly it's going to be is going to be very oftentimes known by its ABC alphabet agencies. Oh, ABC. It's easy. One, two, three. And you're going to have various programs laws and agencies created by the federal government. We're going to take a look at them in our next two videos. And an important idea to keep in mind, part of the philosophy of the New Deal is fighting the depression by using government power to provide what are known as the three R's. How do we deal with these hard times? Because there'll be hard times. Hard times. 
And the three R's include relief, provide relief to the poor, recovery, stimulate economic growth and recovery, and reform, fix the U.S. economy so the situation never happens again. If you want to learn more about the three R's, make sure you check out the video, 100 Days Explained, where we break down and explain the first 100 days of the New Deal, learn about some of the alphabet agencies. I hope you learned a whole lot. If you haven't already done so, make sure you click like on the video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day. Peace.